Renunciation doesn't mean to renounce your happiness. Let's not forget it. Because of it, it is for this naivety that many people think that Buddhism is a very naive religion. It's a very self-denial religion. This is all the indication of the lack of the proper awareness of what the Buddhism is, what the real Buddhist teaching says. <music>
subdue mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. The first line, when it says, commit no evils. Given that we are all wanting to get rid of the fears of life, miseries of life, just by expecting, just by praying, may miseries be removed. Nothing will happen. The Buddha taught, Ye Dharma Hetu Prabhava. All these phenomena of miseries arise from the respective causes. If you don't want the miseries, get rid of the causes of miseries. And what are the causes of miseries? Evil, evil actions, negativities, negative thoughts, delusional thoughts. Unless we get rid of these, our miseries will never go away. Given that nobody wants miseries, we need to learn how to get rid of the, get, get rid of the, the evils, evil actions, evil thoughts, evil words. And the guarantees of these evil thoughts take you to attain the fearlessness. It refers to as the nirvana. Aspiring for nirvana, aspiring for fearlessness, this is known as renunciation. So the first line constitutes the teaching on renunciation. Renunciation doesn't mean to renounce your happiness. When we embrace Buddhism, when we embrace the teaching of the Buddha, we never did it by saying that I have so much happiness, Buddha, please teach me how to get into my happiness. No, this is not how you embrace Buddhism. But on the contrary, we embrace Buddhism, I have so much problem, please teach me how to get into a problem. So the desire to get into a problem, that is the meaning of renunciation. Renunciation doesn't mean to renounce your happiness. Let's not forget it. Because of it, it is for this naivety that many people think that Buddhism is a very naive religion. It's a very self-denial religion. This is all the indication of the lack of the proper awareness of what the B Buddhism is, what the real Buddhist teaching says. Number two, accumulate as great wealth of virtues as possible. Given that each one of us wants happiness, and that to exp as expansive happiness, if you want that, happiness again does not arise by, uh, by a wish mere wishful thought. Instead, it should arise from their respective causes. What are the causes of the happiness? Happiness is the result of the virtues. So the Buddha taught, accumulate as great wealth of virtues. Given that you want the maximum happiness, expansive happiness, you have to accumulate expansive virtues. So, expansive, the most expansive virtues, most expansive happiness is the Buddhahood. So seeking Buddhahood is the Bodhicitta. So the second line, when, you, when the Buddha said, accumulate as great wealth of virtues, the Buddha is teaching us bodhicitta, the most beautiful mind in this universe, the bodhicitta. The mere reflection, the mere glimpse of this feeling makes you feel, makes your mind simply melt into ecstasy of joy. Embracing all the dear mother sentient beings is so beautiful. Okay, how to do that? How to get rid of the evils and how to embrace the maximum, hap maximum virtues? So these both are a, a, the f mental facets as a mental phenomenon, a mental process. So we have to tame the mind. So just see how to tame the mind that the mind doesn't go, that the mind does not uh, chase of the negativities. That the mind embraces the virtues. So how to do that? It is by managing your own mind tame your own mind. What is the best way to tame the mind is the practice of the wisdom of emptiness. So wisdom of the emptiness, it serves like a tea strainer. The tea strainer, what does, what does it do? It, le it freely let go, it freely let flow the drinkable tea and it holds back the tea, resi tea residue. Likewise, the wisdom of emptiness, what it does is that it freely let flow the virtues and it stops all the negativities. So this is 
this wisdom of emptiness, the practice of the wisdom of emptiness is the best way by which to tame your mind so that you can stop all the evil actions and engage in the virtues in the most, in the greatest abundance. And this is the teaching of the Buddha. So for those of us who are not exposed to the sophisticated Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist psychology, I will still say that, say that you can practice this, this one verse by the Buddha, try to stay away from negativities, not to harm others, if possible help others. And um, the, as for the third part, tame your mind, just the, say the, remember the advice of the Buddha, sh the advice of His Holiness the Dalai Lama all the time that His Holiness encourages us to always study the, the Nalanda Buddhist philosophy and psychology. Try to use the, uh, the Kanjur and Tenjur, these texts, as your textbook, not as to, to be kept in the altar in your, in your home. Rather, they must be used as textbooks. Just in your own capacity, see how much you can study. Uh, say, the read something on emptiness, bodhicitta, the four seals, and so forth. So if you do that, uh, you are fulfilling the aspirations of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the aspirations of the Buddha Shakyamuni. This is how you, you can best remember this great teacher, Buddha Shakyamuni, on this Vesak day. And um, let us um, the, um, say, throughout the day, when you are more free, just if you can recite the Buddha Shakyamuni's mantra, Om Muni Muni Ma Muni Swaha, and also uh, Essence of Dependent Origination Mantra, Ye Dharma Hetu Prabhava, Hetum Desham Tathagato Hevatat, Desham Chayo Niruddha Evam Vadi Ma Shramana Swaha. And the four seals, all composite things impermanent, all contaminated things are self nature. Everything is nature of the emptiness, selflessness, transcending sorrow is absolute peace. And then the Bodhicitta verse to take the aspiration Bodhicitta vow on the sacred day. I go for a fusion of the triple gem. I confess the negativities individually. I rejoice in the virtues of all the beings. I hold the precious Buddha from my heart. And then the Heart Sutra, uh, then the, the, the Heart Sutra Mantra. Tiyatha gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhi swaham. If this is how you spend your time to observe this sacred day, Vesak day, uh, this is the best way by which you, by which to remember uh, this great teacher of us, whose footsteps we follow, that each one of us experience the total fearlessness and the infinite happiness, and that you'll be able to lead all the other dear mother sentient beings, your, top, your parents, your children, all the dear mother sentient beings, leaving them aside to us ultimate happiness. So let us pray, as a part of this dedication, that this Vesak day be dedicated uh, towards the long life of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, that His Holiness his wishes be fulfilled spontaneously, and that all these unnecessary wars, the war between Ukraine and Russia, come to come to halt, come to a uh, stop altogether, that everybody can sigh with relief. May all those who pass away due to COVID, or otherwise, may take a favorable rebirth to meet with the, the, the teachings, the great teaching of Bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness as envisioned by the Buddha Shakyamuni. Let us pray that the world finds a real peace, a real happiness, prosperity, and the, the flourishing, thriving of this, this the, the teaching of the Buddha, the message of the Buddha everywhere. And may I pray that each one of you experience the ultimate happiness and the ultimate goodness within you, that you make your family a happier family, <coughs> that you make wherever you go a happier place. Okay, may you have, you and all have a happy Vesakti. Thank you. Mm -hmm.